are needing more information, you can definitely go to our website. But again, we're recording this morning. This is Sarah Sarelson from the Wyoming Children's Trust Fund, and it is so great to have you here with us. I want to take just a moment to call out a few appreciations of folks who have been helping for about the last year and a half now on this project. So from Enroll Wyoming is Jason Mincer, from Wyoming 211, Sabrina Lane, uh, Nicole Nieder and I from the Children's Trust Fund, Danielle Marks from Department of Family Services, Sheila Riceley from the Align Team, Josh Hannes from the Wyoming Primary Care Association, and Jen Davis from the Governor's Office have been the leadership team um, for quite a while now. All right, let's find out where you are coming from. I'm gonna put a poll in the chat and let you tell us which area of the state you're in. I'll give everybody a moment to finish up. Almost everybody has responded. All right, let's end this and I will share with you. We have people from everywhere um, and a couple um, people from everywhere or a few people from everywhere, more than um, we have seen in the past from some of our areas. So thanks so much for getting on today and for playing along this morning as we're all getting started today. All right, so we're gonna talk about where we've been, where things are headed, what family resource centers are. We're gonna give a project update and share a little bit of our letter of interest. We have an entire webinar that we did on the letter of interest. So if you are wanting more information on that than that we provide today, or you're wanting to um, look at it and you're watching the recording, please uh, feel free to go back to our website and I will share that information with you. Um, and all of those pieces are out there and recorded. So we have been talking about family resource centers for quite a while. And we, the state, have really talked about that Wyoming communities lack this no wrong door human services system. This was really highlighted during the COVID-19 pandemic when people were isolated and having a hard time finding basic needs to get through that time that we all um, survived together. Those siloed approaches to the delivery of services, there was agency duplication and gaps in data sharing, which were creating barriers for those of us that work in these fields, but also those who were trying to consume these services. Wyoming also lacks the coordination of human services data across community organizations. And because of this, and a lot of input from a lot of different people, the Governor's Health Task Force identified that multi-generational family resource centers, if established or strengthened, could address these gaps in human services and this access for all of us. So most recently, House Bill 195, known as the ARPA Bill, granted funding for family resource centers in Wyoming. I'm gonna drop this link here if you want to go directly to the bill. Oops, let me redrop it. Hold on. Okay, let me send it to everyone, not just one person. There we go. All right, so the link is there if you are wanting to look at the bill specifically. So this problem statement that was identified through this process is that we were lacking this no wrong door human service system that we've talked about. This is nothing new to anybody who has either worked or lived in um, any area in Wyoming that we are very spread out and we have a lot of great work that's 
happening, but we're not always talking to one another about what that work is or how to best coordinate those services. So we looked at family resource centers as these community-based, flexible, family-focused, and culturally sensitive hubs of support and resources to provide those referrals and resources, programs, and targeted services. And those are based on the needs and interests of those individuals. Families can then choose what kinds of services are best for them. We have a formal definition of family resource centers in Wyoming. So we are naming it as collaborative, community-based entities with an individualized family-centered approach. So what they do is they provide on-site targeted programs, services, resources, activities, and classes to strengthen families and Wyoming communities. It's for all of us. These facilities welcome community members who desire support, services, and opportunities to create healthy, strong, and successful families and communities. It's the work that we are doing already, and it's the work that we'll continue to do and be strengthened through family resource centers. Sometimes we get asked about funding. So here are the funding pieces. Funding for this project is from the Wyoming Preschool Development Grant, the Supplemental Child Care and Development Fund Discretionary Funds, the ARPA Direct Funds, and from the Wyoming Children's Trust Fund. So the project budget is $4,850,000 um, to implement and strengthen family resource centers across Wyoming. The project has two primary goals to create a statewide network whose focus will be to provide technical assistance and best practices for communities. And this network is known as the Family Resource Center Collective. So Wyoming Family Resource Center Collective is the network that we're talking about. It also has a project goal to provide grants to Wyoming communities to help establish or strengthen family resource centers. Inside of those two big goals, we have smaller goals. So hiring an evaluation vendor to measure the effectiveness of family resource centers. We have identified a vendor to help us to identify whether we are implementing family resource centers in the best way possible for Wyoming, and then to help us to determine what outcomes should be measured by family resource centers. So it's the talking the same language, collecting the same da data across the state so that we can best see what it is that's happening. Then we are educating the public and providers about family resource centers. So some of that is this effort that we are making every single month to make sure that we have a webinar of information and available details on our website for anybody who wants to learn about family resource centers. We are implementing the Protective Factors Survey Database. So the Protective Factors Survey is going to be trained to all of our family resource centers as a way for us to collect data across the state, but then we need a database to be able to hold all of that statewide information and for individual organizations or family resource center groups to be able to look at your data in your community and then use that data as you see fit in making decisions, in applying for grants, in a variety of different ways that we wanna provide you access to your data as well. We, as we've talked about, are establishing the Family Resource Center Collective, this network for the Family Resource Center. And that is a combination of organizations who are providing technical assistance to those who are involved with Family Resource Centers. And you can be involved with the Family Resource Center Network or this uh, Family Resource Center Collective without applying for grant funds or having some of the other ties and connections, but through wanting evidence-based training or to be able to be part of the data collection system. So there are lots of ways to be involved with our collective network without necessarily having to um, be part of all of the components. We also are going to provide grant opportunities to communities that are county-based 
And we are bringing evidence-based training opportunities to everyone who wants it in Wyoming. So we'll be having trainings on the protective factors, adverse childhood experiences, and I have um, a webinar that is coming up that we'll share with you at the end of today. We're going to be training on the national family standards, on parent advisory councils, among many other trainings. And we're partnering with Wyoming 211 on the Communicare, the Community Information Exchange, or the CIE, as we move through this process. Lots of different pieces. And Wyoming Family Resource Center Collective has support from many state agencies, nonprofits, and for profit organizations to support grantees and non grantees as we move through the phases of Family Resource Centers. So technical assistance may be requested by anybody at any time, whether you are a formal member of the network or not. And those entities that are providing technical assistance formally at this point are the Wyoming Children's Trust Fund, Wyoming 211, CSNOW, or the Community Services Network of Wyoming, and the National Family Support Network. If you are an organization that is interested in providing technical assistance, training, support to family serving organizations in Wyoming, please let us know. We would love to have you as part of our formal plan um, to get good information to those in Wyoming. All right, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce Nicole Nieder and Amy Zeke. Nicole is the Business Office Coordinator for the Wyoming Children's Trust Fund and provides the fiscal support and contract management for this project. Amy Zeke is the owner of Silver Linings Consultants and is the project consultant for the Family Resource Center implementation. Amy has been the main contact for the letter of interest and is providing technical assistance for the county applicants. Nicole will be working with each county to complete their contracts for grant funding. If you have letter of interest questions, uh, those questions are uh, filtered through Amy Zeke so that we can do so in an organized and consistent manner. And any questions regarding the fiscal pieces or contracts, Nicole is your contact on those pieces. I know they are both on today. Um, and so if you are thinking of anything right in this moment, you're welcome to send them a message, but we will also make sure that you have their information um, after today. All right, so let's talk about the letter of interest. This QR code will take you to the letter of interest. Our webinar last month reviewed the letter of interest in detail and I'll drop form so that you can go to it specifically. It's rather short. Those of you who have already filled it out, you already know that. Uh, if you or your or if you or your organization completes the letter of interest form, you're not obligated to continue in the program. You can change your mind later. So if you fill it out now and you want to be connected and find out more. Um, what happens then is we set up a meeting with Amy and you find out more details and we'll walk through those steps in just a moment. Um, but I want to pause here to see if there are any questions specific to completing the letter of interest. I see we have many people on that were on last month and got all of those details, so I don't want to repeat them if you don't need them. Okay, so thinking about the letter of interest, there are a few requirements of who can apply for the funding. So we're talking about public, public or private organizations. Organizations must be located within Wyoming. These are Wyoming funds to use on Wyoming people by Wyoming providers. Organizations must be family serving in one of the following areas, child care referral and assistance, early child education, elementary or middle school or high school education, some form of parent education, economic assistance, concrete supports in times of need. So this would include um, food banks, 
those kinds of places, formula banks, diaper banks, we've seen those popping up across the state, which has been incredible. And then healthcare assistance. I'll share with you today that you will see counties with a cowboy hat have submitted or been included in at least one letter of interest form since the form opened on August 10th. So we have a great response, um, a really good representation across the state. There are areas that we are continuing to target. And if you are in one of those areas without a cowboy hat, um, and you are interested in finding out more information about submitting a letter of interest, we would be very happy to meet with you and talk to you about what that could look like. So I'll give you just a moment. And then I'll pause here to see if anybody has questions thus far. All right, we're moving right along. Oh, I see something in the chat box. Is there a way to see who has submitted? We we could figure that we could figure that way way out. Um, we absolutely could um, share that information. So if it's something that is wanted, we will definitely work on getting that information um, to people so people know. What, what kinds of organizations are applying and who is interested in this funding. So for sure. And Sarah, yeah. um, real fast, just for some clarification for folks, um, if there are multiple organizations from one county that are submitting an LOI, we will try to get all of those organizations together so that you can discuss who could potentially be taking the lead on this grant application. Um, because to clarify, funding is going to be for one pot of money per county. So we are asking that organizations um, do work together and network to create a larger potential family resource center in your county. So I hope that helps with some of the clarification as well on how this is working. Amy, Amy can, I, can I ask a question on that note? Sure. Please do. Is it, and I don't know about, I know we're scheduled to meet with you just to kind of talk about the application. Um, how would that work? Because I guess I haven't really looked so much at, well, I kind of glanced at the grant application. So for counties that maybe are interested in partnering together, um, is there, like, will we complete one grant application together or thoughts on that? Brooke, great question. Um, yes, we are asking that you guys complete one application. Um, however, you only need to list one fiscal agent and we're asking that it be from the lead agency. And then you list who the directors are for the organizations that are partnering on that application process. And we can also discuss it in more detail for each application um, meeting, but it could vary by applicant. Also, what some of your answers would be within the application too, just in order to meet all of the organization's needs. Um, because we know that many organizations could be starting in different places, but you're trying to coordinate efforts a little bit better. So that's where I come in with the TA for the grant application as a whole to kind of help everyone talk through what that looks like. Perfect, good questions. And Sarah, there is a question from Carrie about what the available funding is for this current grant cycle. Yeah, so for, yes. So the answer to that Carrie is that it is um, capped at, for each county at the 67, thousand five hundred um, and that is through August September ish uh, depending on when contracts get signed and when um, when the time frames fall in there 
Um, but yes, so for the, each county, the funding is for that first, it'll probably be nine months-ish. It'll be $67,500 to spend in that first amount. And then um, it's around another 80-ish thousand um, for the years moving forward that we can talk through with each individual um, contract based on work moving forward um, and knowing that there are opportunities for additional funding to come from partners as we move through and have projects identified that may require more funds and are showing really great efforts in community collaboration. Um, so I see a hand is raised. Me and this and kind of along those same lines because a huge chunk of this funding is ARPA. Um, you know, to continue that down the road, I guess to um get more clarification as to where those additional dollars might come from in the future. Yeah, so I will tell you that one example is that we have a county that is working with um or through a um, credit union. Um, and that their their foundation um, is looking at ways to support family resource centers in a county moving forward. It's going to be very county dependent. It also means building capacity for counties to apply for additional federal funds that are available for these kinds of efforts, looking at other state foundations that are available. Um, and, and getting a little bit creative with our business partners that we aren't always tapping into. Um, and as Susan has put up, um, the community services block grant funds can be leveraged for the FRC work. A lot of the partnerships that we are building uh, in the communities, the discussion will be around what does this look like after 2026? so that we can continue. And we know that it's going to take time to build plans, build partnerships, all of those pieces. And this funding that we have will hopefully help to be able to do some of that and then really be able to leverage what available funds are in the community or are there through other grant opportunities to be able to support family resource centers. And there is funding available through federal grants to be able to support these kinds of efforts. We haven't ever looked at collaborating as a state to ask for those funds. And this is an effort in that direction. Thank you. Yeah, these are great questions. So Amy mm -hmm. talked about this a little bit. Once of interest is submitted, then Amy sets up a meeting with those who are listed on the form or those who you include. And sometimes we get multiple applications from multiple counties. And our request is that we work better and are stronger when we all are able to work together on these efforts in communities, even if there are organizations who have different pieces of this work coming together and collaborating really makes it better for the families and the individuals who we are serving. And so the effort is being made so that we can have one county-based application for the funding, but that can look a lot of different ways. And you as a county know who would be the best to be the lead to organize, to do which pieces of it. And so we're really relying on your expertise when you're meeting with Amy to really have those discussions about who, who is it makes most sense in being able to um, bring to the table who is not yet at the table, but that you want them to be part of this effort. And so maybe that's part of your plan as you move forward and you're able to um, build some of these collaborations in your communities, as we always talk about. Um, and, and what we have heard is that people are having a lot of different meetings about a lot of different things, but aren't always coming together and talking about what does this look like to the community as a whole, and how could that help in meeting the needs of those who live and work in your counties. 
So Susan also dropped here, which is great. Um, other options for funding, so TANF, the U.S. Rural Development, the private folks, of course, philanthropy, um, community economic development funds. We've had quite a bit of brainstorming around what could this look like in the future that we haven't necessarily tapped in all together collectively to make our efforts better for everybody. Uh, so those conversations definitely will continue to happen. I'm gonna pause here and see any other questions. Susan is a wealth of knowledge as we all know. Thank you, Susan. All right, while you're thinking about your questions, I do want to share with you a very great opportunity that we have on October 9th from 3 to 5 p.m., which is strategically um, as close to the after school hours as possible in trying to get um, some of our educators able to attend. Um, we often plan meetings in the middle of the day and, and not, don't always do it at a time that um, those who work directly with our students in that way are able to. So we're trying a 3 to 5 p.m. time. We're hosting an opportunity to hear from Dr. Robert Onda and Laura Porter from ACE Interface to learn more about ACE science tools and practices for working with families who have experienced trauma. So you may know that in the early 1990s, Dr. Onda began a collaboration with Dr. Vince Folletti at Kaiser Permanente in San Diego to investigate child abuse as an underlying cause of medical, social, and public health problems. And this effort then led to the large study scale funded by the CDC to track the effects of childhood trauma on health throughout the lifespan. They called it the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study, so the ACE study. Dr. Onda played a principal role in the design of the study and serves as the co-principal investigator and co-founder. And Laura Porter is the co-founder of ACE Interface with Dr. Robert Onda. Ms. Porter develops and disseminates educational products and empowerment strategies that help lead leaders through the nation to dramatically improve population health. We are incredibly blessed to have these experts presenting and working with us here in Wyoming. So if you are interested in attending or sharing the message, um, we're really trying to target those who work with families and children to participate in this webinar and gain some information. I'll pause there and see if we have any other questions, but we really are I'm going to wrap up for today. We didn't have a ton of updates other than those who have submitted some letters of interest. We'll plan to do another check-in in October. We'll continue to record these for anybody who misses it, but I appreciate that you continue to hop on. I'm going to